this is Dread from Epic Builds. And in today's video topic, we're going to go over Surge, Vessel of Strive, Veyon's Chariot, Spellblade. Finally, time to showcase how strong Vessel of Strive really can be. Surge had some issues when it was released, and an insanely long cooldown for how much damage it was doing at the time, and we all weren't really sure how to properly play it. Some people have had success with it from then and now, but it was very middling at best. One of the biggest problems, of course, is Spellblade is a mastery that uses Ward as its main defense. In a world where Ward was in the worst spot it's ever been for almost a year, year and a half, like maybe-ish, something like that. We also had a new unique come into the game recently, Veyon's Chariot. This pretty much just gives us 40% more damage, as we were surging every 3 seconds anyways. This allows us to dump our weapon and run a shield instead, because I didn't want to be dual wielding and take 15% increased damage for no reason. So I opted for a Bulwark of the Last Abyss. Wait, Dread, Th Isn't this a new item too? I wouldn't really blame you for thinking this, dear viewer, as this shield has been overshadowed by the long reign of Bastion of Honor, but I think it's finally time for it to shine. This has literally everything you'd ever want for a build like this and more. Before Veyon's Chariot was released, in the middle of making this character, by the way, I was trying to utilize a pair of Solarion Step, which gives us a lot of melee crit multiplier, but at a huge cost of negative physical resistance. But now that we have the new sexy boots, this meant I needed a lot more melee critical strike multiplier, and I also didn't want to dual wield anymore. Then a viewer, Aurora Claire, reminded me of the existence of Bulwark, and how strong it would be for this build because of the downside, losing 25% of your HP every 3 seconds realistically didn't matter because of course we are a vessel build and have 600 flat HP regen. This means the shield is straight upsides, and it has some of the highest block chance in the entire game. It is on an iron glass base, which is the preferred base if you want to stack block chance, and also 20% block chance as one of its unique modifiers, which is equivalent to T6, T7 block chance, and then of course, if you're lucky, you can put T6, T7 block chance on top of this and easily get to 70% block chance with no other support whatsoever. This is on top of this, and we can easily get 70% block chance with no other support whatsoever. This is insanely strong for non-sentinels because reaching this high of block chance before was a fantasy outside of Bastion Honor, and of course now the new shield, uh, Face of the Mountain, which we'll talk about in a different video. And finally allowing shields like this to shine because Bastion finally stepped down as one of the best shields in the game. Then of course, the percentage armor on top of this is actually mental, as that's one of our main defenses now. Bellblade used to not be able to scale that much armor. That was one of its weaknesses from back in the day. It has no skills like Sigils of Hope or armor passives that are really good outside of Shattered Ages. So where are we getting all of this armor from? Multiple sources. We're choosing to run bases that have a lot of flat armor like Celestial Robes, Celestial Helm, and Veyon's Charge has a lot of armor too. Firebrand also gives us a lot of flat armor when we're just setting up the surge combo, which of course is all the time with this build, so it's just free DR. But the main place we are gaining a lot of our armor is from Veribor's Persistence. Why are we running this? Well, it's not only on a competitive base for a set item, the Ivory Ring base, it also can give us up to 180 flat armor, 18 intelligence, and 18 health regen, which is like T6, T7 rolls of every single modifier I just listed. And it's just more you could ever get on a coral ring, so it's just better to use this instead. This makes it the perfect ring for this build, and brings it to a whole new level. And you must be wondering, dear viewer, why do I care about armor so much? Well, armor is one of the best ways of making our ward feel better. So for instance, we can only get to a certain amount of ward per second, like we're capped at one point. 
right? Like to 600, 700, 800 war per second with Vessel, especially since Spellblade has no health regen in the tree, we're pretty much capped at a certain amount. So how do we raise our EHP without actually raising our ward, which we can't do? We just build other sources of DR. And since Vessel of Strife is so insanely efficient at what it does, this means that we can just build armor everywhere else and then just feel like as though we're at 10k uh, ward. Like for instance, I'm at like 5k ward all the time. Technically, this build feels like as though it's at like 10k, 12k ward without any of those defenses. So you actually don't need that much ward to play the game. You just need to build other defenses on top of that ward to make it viable. And that's why I really do think that ward is finally back uh, to where it should have been. Uh, two years ago. One thing I'd like to note before uh, going on with this guide is you were probably going to need a Vessel of Strife to buy into this build because this build won't be able to actually function without a Vessel of Strife. You will need to go on a different build and farm a Vessel of Strife from T4 Jirla, which just means you'll have to play like a T4 Jirla farming build, which is fine. And everything else can be farmed after that point. We also run a legendary Quicksilver Coil. Not only can we get a lot of health regen percentage on it for our vessel, it also gives us haste on hit. Why is this important? Well, Surge does 3% more damage per percentage of movement speed you have, and Veyon's Charge gives us increased damage equal to our movement speed, so this ends up being another best in slot for us as well, and I managed to land a perfect one. With all of this, we manage to gain a lot of ward per second, have a lot of armor, and deal a lot of damage. This is by far one of the heaviest investments into a build that I've ever put in, and I am proud to say that it was all worth it in the end because this build actually slaps really hard. If you end up enjoying the video, I'd suggest liking and subscribing to the channel, as that's the best way to support my efforts here at Epic Builds, and also tell YouTube that I am doing a good job. With all that being said, let's get in game, shall we? Alright, here we are in game with the build. We have a lot to talk about in such a small amount of time because it's a very complex build, so I will keep it short. Pretty much skill rotation. Attack with your surge at least three times. Attack, you always crit. Thanks to Firebrand's always crit node. Uh, pretty much that's your whole entire idea. For a boss, you want to attack ten times so you can get all ten stacks of this thing, blade weaving from the spellblade tree. And you want to just keep attacking and make sure that you're... Veon's charge is up. As until here, bam, it's up, and then we attack again. Now, our cooldown on our surge is 2.5 seconds. You can actually make it 3 seconds by getting rid of this to get it to 2.8 seconds, and you actually don't really lose much out of it. It's just a change that I wasn't able to work on, and this just had ward per second on it, so I was like, cool, yo, right? Now, that's pretty much the rotation. Obviously, throw in some enchant weapons. Never use your surge because it's just there for the more damage. And then of course, Flame Ward for the defenses. And that's pretty much it for the skill rotation. Now for the skills themselves. For Surge itself, we take five points in the Shocking Blows. This is pretty much to make up for the fact that we're utilizing a one-hander and a shield. Since we don't get that much melee lightning from everywhere, we kind of need this to actually deal enough damage. Then three points into Conduit. This makes it so Surge deals more damage per four static charges you have, up to 3%. So for instance, since we have 200 charges, that's like... 50 times 3, 150% more damage right there, which of course is really strong as we need as much more damage as possible because we're attacking only every three, uh, like once per three seconds. Then three points in the lightning rush, Surge shows more damage per 1% of movement speed and that's 3%. So movement speed is insane with this build, getting movement speed everywhere, everywhere you can possibly shove it in is insane because you get 3% more damage per movement speed. So for instance, right now I'm at 37%, but if I attack here, I'm at 67%. That's another 880, like 200% more damage right there. And that's without movement speed on my Veyons. That's without like, we need a little bit more movement speed. We could probably slam this onto a chest that gives us 50% more movement, uh, movement speed. The one chest, where is it? I think it's somewhere around here. One second here. Where is that chest? Here it is. Falcon. If you get like a 4 LP Falcon, you could easily slap this on, ignore that crit multi, and this will give you way more damage because of the movement speed, right? That's pretty much it for that. 
then one point travel to jolt four points into expanse this is mandatory uh having this much area makes the build feel so much better because surge if you did not know is a giant rectangle it's hard to tell with the animation but it's actually a really big rectangle and it hits in front of you and behind you so it actually has a large amount of aoe you just have to play with it and understand how big the aoe is but trust me it's a lot bigger than you think it is it's just the animation sucks for it i think this deserves a new animation in my opinion because you could easily make this animation the whole entire rectangle and make it look really cool then four points in a storm battery here uh this makes it so that while surge is on cooldown and using a melee attack and hitting at least one enemy guarantees you a stack of dormant energy pretty much since we're always surging and attacking this is just free damage for us and i found that four stacks is enough for how much attack speed i have with uh with enchant weapon when i have enchant weapon up i always have all of my dormant stacks up by the time uh Veon's charge and surge comes back up after like off cooldown which is great and that's pretty much it for surge firebrand stereotypical firebrands uh setup mainly we mainly have incineration so we get more damage per stack one point into illuminating fire so we always have auto crit per stack and we, so that if we have at least three stacks we auto crit which is amazing because it means we don't have to run base crit anywhere and it solves all of our gearing problems and it solves all the problems of being a spell blade i.e having to build into crit and two points into wildfire extra stacks Five points into installation. We really like this armor. It gives us a lot of armor. As you can tell, as I'm attacking, we go all the way up to like 47% armor. And then we lose it all 47. Then we go back to, up to 47. Lose it all, go back to 47. This much of insane DR makes it so that our ward doesn't feel like it's paper. Then one point to galvanize, turn this into shock because we're dealing lightning damage. Two points travel into uh, power shielding. Three points into fading flame. I found that this feels really good. Later on, when you're cons constantly consuming charges here, I can show you, get actually a decent amount of ward here every single time we surge. This could be used somewhere else. Don't necessarily have to put it here. You could put it anywhere else, but I really enjoyed this specifically. Then three points into fulmination for the attack speed per stack just get, helps us get to max stacks faster. Then four out of five points in flare because it gets turned into shock chance, which we really direly need with this build. And that's pretty much it for firebrand then for enchant weapon stereotypical enchant weapon tree we do grab frozen sparks though for the extra physical I and mean, the extra melee uh melee uh physical because we have 40 which is like about four i think extra flat it's for free why not right then the attack speed makes it so that we can get back to ch full charges much quicker that's why enchant weapon is so insanely strong for this build it just gives us more damage as well. Three points into Molten Steel. Uh, you could take this point out and put it into Molten Steel. I haven't really decided yet. I like the Melee Lightning because we want as much Melee Lightning as possible. Then two points travel into Fulminate. Five points into Thundering because we want the Melee Lightning flat damage and the increased Melee Lightning damage. Really, really strong. Then uh, Flame Ward. Stereotypical Flame Ward setup. It's even stronger because we're acting an actual Ward build. So we actually gain a lot of Ward when we use our uh, uh, Flame Ward, which is nice. Then static, literally all you really care about is getting to 200 charges. Now, I do have an investment to overload and diode. Why is that? Because we only have a 22% chance to proc uh, haste on hit, and we want to proc haste as much as possible on a single target so that we get the 30% uh, movement speed, so we get the 30% more damage from our uh, surge. Well, 90% more damage from our surge, right? And the increased damage from Veon's charge. And that's why we have that, is so that we can get haste. Well, why don't you just use momentum? Well, momentum consumes all your charges, and then you have no charges, and then, you know, you're sad. Because you do more damage per charge. So this is the best of both worlds. That's actually why we grab elemental burst here, is for extra chances to proc haste on hit. Because we want as many hits as possible because of that. And that's pretty much it for the skills. Now for the passives here. Uh, we're playing a ward build, so our passes are completely different than like an HP build. So you take one point travel and scholar, eight points to arcanus. So we want as much intelligence as humanly possible because we're a spellblade. One point travel and reactive ward, five points in the mage floor. We really like attack speed. Five points in the warden. We really like ward retention. We want as much ward retention as humanly possible with a vessel of strife. Then for Spellblade here, I only have three points into Elemental Affinity. I have better reses than most, so uh, you 
don't need points into this unless you're using it to cap your resistances. Eight points and infuse weapon for the flat lightning. This is very important because we're using one weapon, not two. Then eight points to Arcane Warden. This is just a bunch of free ward as we're attacking with Surge. Five points to Warden's Echo. This is mainly just so we get an extra hit on single target so that we can keep applying our haste, which then gives us a bunch of more damage. Then five points to Arcane Shielding. We get a bunch of ward per second, a lot of DR. Then we make it into four stacks, which gives us about 12% dr and a bunch of ward per second also gives us a bunch of increased armor per arcane shield as well making it so that we get a bunch of armor if we just simply attack four times which we're attacking literally like all the time we get a bunch of dr a bunch of armor makes it so that our ward feels even better then uh, eventually eight points in Defender of Welrin uh, when you like figure out the skill points and all that because I like the ward, uh, ward retention specifically. Then five points into Essence Duel for the attack speed and extra ward on top of Arcane Warden. Uh, three points travel to Prismatic Blade. I actually haven't put more points into this mainly because I don't think it's worth your time because there are many other things you could be doing with Spellblade than putting one point into this. Uh, 10 points into Volca's Razor for the increased damage because um, Spellblade's really hard to get increased damage, so this is all you get. Then 10 points into Blade Weaver for a bunch of more damage as well. It pretty much the way this works is we use Firebrand and gives us Blade Weaving stacks and makes our Surge deal that much more damage on single target and makes it so that we can actually, you know, do damage. Now, 10 points into Mental Fortitude. We want as much Ward and Intelligence as possible. 5 points into Prodigy for even more Intelligence per second. Sadly, this is kind of dwarfed by our Vessel of Strife, but we want as much Ward per second as possible, so we'll just take it anyways. Then 8 points into Outrun and Outlast for some Ward Retention and for cooldown Recovery Speed with Surge. This pretty much makes it so that we go from 4 seconds to 2.8 seconds plus uh, the cooldown that I have on the helmet. You can actually take this off and not have to run the uh, uh, cooldown idols and be at three seconds thanks to Veon's Chariot. That's actually one uh, benefit of not running Veon's Chariot and going for a uh, like melee crit multi setup with the solar and step is you actually can just go for the lowest cooldown surge as possibly can. The problem is you actually need time to set up your firebrand and uh, I don't like running Solar on Step, so this is actually just better, like straight up better than the Solar on Step version. So you want to be attacking every three seconds anyways because of Aeon's Charge. And that's pretty much it for the passives. Now for the gearing, Throne of Ambition, obviously best uh, throne, best idol whatsoever. Best Little Strife, you need this to function. The build feels absolute poo-poo without it. Let me show you. Uh, you could technically do T4 Jirla, technically, but as you can tell by our ward number here, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it. I wouldn't suggest doing T4 Jirla. You could do it. You could do it. Don't get me wrong, but I seriously wouldn't suggest it because it would feel absolutely awful and you'd probably die a bunch of times. So I'd heavily suggest just playing a different build and then building it to surge as you can tell there. And for the helmet. I really like the cooldown, helps us get to three seconds. Intelligence, health regen, health regen. Uh, that damage before health, I used a, a sealing rune to just seal it away. Uh, the Celestial Helm is a great base because it gives a bunch of flat armor. We want as much flat armor as we possibly get. Uh, weapon, Crystal Sword. Uh, this is one problem I have. Uh, this is for a different build. It, you would actually want crit multi instead of the melee crit chance. I just had that melee crit chance for a different build, although the attack speed is great. Just literally just swap that melee crit for like attack speed. What I really like about this though, it shows that I don't even have the best weapon ever and I'm still doing like 5 million crits on the dummy. So that's fine. Uh, then the chest here, uh, Celestial Robes. This is a perfect chest, absolutely wonderful chest. Increased armor, health regen, because uh, we don't need HP, right? Firebrand, Intelligence, Lightning Crit Multi, literally everything you'd ever want. This is literally one of the best chests I have ever made, literally. Literally one of the best chests I've ever made in the history of the game. Literally one of the best ones. I know it doesn't seem like it, but it is because it is so insanely strong for this build. And for the shield, we really like Bulwark of the Last Abyss. You could use a rare. You could use uh, Bastion if you really wanted to. There's a lot of different things you could use. But I like Bulwark because we're already at 54% block. I do not have the block uh blessing i have fizz res but if you fixed your gear and actually got better gear you could run the block effect and have a lot more block effect or you could land block effect on your bulwark or you could land block chance either way 
This is just an extra layer of damage. Mainly, the re main reason we're using Bulwark is because it allows us to scale damage with the melee crit multi while also not taking 15% increased damage for no reason because turns out if you take 15% increased damage, you die to dots so quickly because dots don't care about your armor. So it's gonna chew up your ward and if you're taking 15% increased damage, good luck surviving, right? Amulet. Oracle Amulet Base, best in slot. Damage over time is your main weakness. Damage over time from Jurla, Soulfire Bastion, stuff like that. This will make it so that you can do those fights and not instantly die. You can get a bunch of health regen, you can get frailty, you can get resistances, uh, probably lightning damage. This isn't perfect, obviously. This is a last minute shoe in because I realized that dot damage was kicking my ass. So having an Oracle Amulet on top of just not having Bulwark. This Oracle Amulet on the 12, and of course the 12% DR from Spellblade seems to be enough. Uh, you, I wish there was other ways of getting more dot defense, but this is our main one. And it can roll all the way up to 20%, which would be great. Then for the rings here, Faribos Persistence, best in slot. Literally look at my ward regen, 476, 600 uh, into the, my intelligence. All you need to know. And look at my armor too. Literally all you need to know right there. Uh, that's why I'm using it. Uh, quick server coil. This is insanely strong because we're running Vayon's charge because of the haste on hit. Also gives us free health regen, gives us attack speed. And of course I landed uh, health regen on it, intelligence. Literally best in slot for the build. I'm so happy I landed it this properly. A uh, belt, literally one of the best, best belts I've ever crafted too. This is like Gucci corner, by the way. Uh, Increased mana regen, don't really care about that. That'll be good for a different build. Uh, increase, although to be honest, it does make it so we can sustain a uh, surge, which is cool. Then lightning damage, of course. Uh, and then of course, cleanse is the seal. Health regen is amazing. Look how much health regen we get from that. And of course, crit avoidance. I have 99% crit avoidance because we are Gucci corner today. Uh, we got a perfectly rolled critical strike avoidance roll on stream, which was absolutely hilarious. So that was funny. So we're at 99% crit multi. I can't wait to die to the 1% crit. And that's pretty much it for the belt, for the gloves, intelligence, attack speed, regen, regen, best uh, best in slot, run like Crusader Gauntlets for the Void Res. They on charge, best in slot boots. You literally do not need these to make the build function. You do plenty of damage without them. You could just run a pair of uh, uh, boots like, where is it? Uh, this. You could wear boots like this. Go up to 900 ward per second and have way more ward and be way more tanky. But Dread, being the damage whore he is, really likes damage. So we're going to do that instead for now. But if you wanted to become absolutely immortal, that's all you got to do. Then, of course, Vessel Strife, very important. You want a health regen on it or resistances, whatever you need. Resistance stacking on this build is a little annoying, but thankfully, thanks to the fact that, like, we don't technically need this, we don't technically need this, and we don't technically need this, we have plenty of ward slots. Our, our idols suck pretty much for this build outside because like we don't need surge cooldown. Uh, the only thing we can really get is ward per second because we do plenty of damage. We don't need increased damage from our idols. We just need to have thrown for the armor stacking on single target. We actually get to like 70% armor on single target, which is absolutely amazing. Thanks to throne. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. So just getting vessel stripe before you play it. With all that being said, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest day wherever you're at and bye.